towel. Answer the phone. Shipley, I know you're there. Colonel. Taylor, where's Shipley? I'm with him right now. He's in, he's in pretty bad shape. All right, listen to me. Did you locate the weapon? Yeah, it's, it's here. I'm with it. <sighs> Describe it. It's a kid. It, it's, it's a kid. They make it into some kind of kid. It, that, that's the weapon. What? Colonel, look. I can't reach you. You have to bring it to me. Do you understand? No, Shipley can't move. I mean, he's, he's not looking good at all. Police are everywhere. I don't know how I'm getting out right now. I, I don't even have an exit strategy right then now. Then you know what you have to do. Kill it. And that was a clip from the creator. I'm delighted to say that the creator's creator, I guess we could call you, uh, Gareth Edwards, is with us. Hello, Gareth. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And you? Yeah, I was just thinking, we spoke to you in a previous incarnation of this show for Monsters. So would that be 2010? Yeah, that's right. When you'd come up with this extraordinary film, former BBC cameraman, and uh, that seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah, and it was, so basically what that movie was, like a lot of people, when they do their first film, they have no money. And <laughs> and right. and so we, the way we did it, because my background was visual effects, is I ended up taking about five people um, in a van around Central America. And whenever we saw something beautiful or amazing location, we jumped out and tried to invent a scene for the movie. And then when we got into the edit, we just put all the best stuff together and it was very organic, very creative process. And then I got very lucky and that that teleported me to the Super Bowl final and I got to do Godzilla and Star Wars as the next films, which mm -hmm. is kind of insane. I remember. And, and so this film uh, is really like me trying to find like a sweet spot between those two extremes. I was going to say, there's, there's something of that monster's vibe in this film, but but introduce us to the, who is the creator? Who or what is the creator? It's a good question. I think today I can describe the creator as the kind of Oppenheimer of our world. It's this genius, um, you know, and to some extent, maybe the Osama bin Laden of the world. It's this genius um, uh, AI uh, engineer that has basically created all the breakthroughs in AI. And so the West wants to ban AI, the world's kind of divided and the West wants to kill the creator. Um, to stop this stuff being made. But, and so from the point of view of America and everything, it's a public enemy number one, uh, like the devil. And from the point of view of Asia, well, AI has been embraced as equals. Uh, the creator is God, like the Messiah. And, and, and so there's this hunt for this person throughout the movie. You know, we had this conversation um, around the latest Mission Impossible film. You know, it's one, you know, AI has dominated public conversation for the last 12 months. So it's one thing for us to be picking up on that, but you were obviously investigating this. I mean, Spielberg did a long time ago, but you obviously thought that AI was the coming subject. When? When did this? When did the story of the creator start for you? I would love to take credit for that, but it was more like um, the holy trinity of science fiction is sort of aliens, spaceships, robots. And I'd done an alien film, I'd done a spaceship film, and I was like, oh, I really want to do a robot one next if I can. And so I was using it to start with as like a metaphor like a science fiction metaphor for people who are different to us. But then the second you start exploring AI, you get all these fascinating questions like, how do you know they're real? What happens if they don't do what you want? Can you turn them off? You know, what if they don't want to be turned off? And that be the film became more about that, those sort of ideas than the original fairy tale. And then, you know, you have to pick a date when you're doing a science fiction film. And even Stanley Kubrick got it a bit wrong with 2001 you know, we don't live on the moon, et cetera. And so I was like, if I pick 2070, I won't look like an idiot because I'll be dead then and no one can tell me, I would, you know. <laughs> and and I should have picked like, my joke that I should have picked like 2024 because it, it sort of happened so much faster than than anyone was expecting, even the experts. It's kind of surreal. Yeah. So should, are you scared of it? No. No. No, because it's like... Because also it's, it's, it's the heart of the strike as well, you know, is yeah. what happens to intellectual property, what happens to faces and actors and writers. Yeah. Once AI, this is not the AI of your movie, but it's certainly the subject of the year. And these are all really fascinating dilemmas that we sort of had it with music, you know, when everything goes digital, it sort of forces these very things that were very hypothetical in the past, like the nature of ownership. You know, it used to be like, well, you reprint a record you either buy it or you don't, and that's it. And then someone goes, what if it doesn't physically exist? You know what I mean? And what if I ask someone to play it to me and do they know, do they, I then owe you money? And it gets very complicated. Mm -hmm. And, and I think AI 
you know, helping people generate creative things in the future, we're going to have the same problems. And um, I don't know what the answer is. Nobody seems to know right now. I'm sitting to you, uh, I'm sitting opposite you and behind you is is uh, a big backdrop, says the creator. And then uh, this extraordinary kind of spaceship, for want of a better word, Nomad, which you've created. Can you just tell us about Nomad and where that fits in? The story. Yeah, Nomad's like, I, I guess you'd call it a space station or something, but it's basically a military platform that orbits the Earth and essentially gives the West the upper hand in this war against AI. Um, it was kind of like when you design something, you're always trying to combine different visuals subconsciously. And so for us, the two things I wanted to get in there was a bird of prey, like the idea that there's this sort of thing in the sky that might kill you. And then also like an eye, like an all seeing eye. So it's like a circular thing. So the shape was like this combination of two ideas and we had the whole pandemic to tinker away at the designs. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? They are. And if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.